And now we begin to look at the readings of the liturgy. The first reading is from Exodus 24, 3 to 8. It's the making of the covenant. Now, why would the church want to do this? This is year B, the making of the covenant. Why? Because the Lord said, this is my blood of the new covenant. It's a new covenant, which means it's the covenant that Jeremiah prophesied, right? I'll make a new covenant, not like the old one. But this one, see, also takes blood. So now we have this text uh, of the covenant. And Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord. And they all answered with one accord. You see? Vayan kol ha'am. All the people answered, kol echad, one voice. And they said, kol hadivarim asher diber Adonai nase. Everything that the Lord says, we will do. Now, what does that remind you of? What does Our Lady say? And that Cain is seen, you know, which is so redolent of the renewal of the covenant. Do whatever he tells you. That's covenant talk. You see? And so Moses wrote the words of Adonai uh, down. Um, and rising early in the morning, he built at the foot of the mountain, this is Mount Sinai, an altar and twelve sacred stones for the twelve tribes of Israel. That's very imaginative, isn't it? Those stones, they stand for you, and they're going to watch you make this covenant, and they're not going to forget it. So make sure you mean it. And so he wrote all the the, the words of the Lord, and he got up Baboker, and he built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and the, with set up twelve uh, pillars, stone pillars, uh, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Then he sent young men to offer burnt offerings and sacrifice young bulls as communion offerings. And that's a very interesting word, you see. Uh, you see, they're called their peace offerings. But you know, we've done enough. Recently, I think, on this word shalom, huh? it means let there be everything that should be between us, let it all be right. Shalom. We desire that you create shalom as we offer this sacrifice, you see? Uh, and so, it's a peace offering in that sense, you know? In fact, it's translated here, communion offering. Now, Moses took half the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it aloud to the people. All that the Lord has said we will do, we will hear and do. Then he took the blood and splashed it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you in all these words. Now that probably reflects an old, I don't know if it still goes on, but it did 50, 70 years ago. If one sheikh wanted us to make a berit with the sheikh of another tribe, they get an animal, I think usually a goat, but I'm not sure, and they pour all the blood in a bowl, and then sheikh of tribe A and sheikh of tribe B put their hand in that bowl. Now they share blood. Now they're bound by the same blood. And then the, the genealogies of the two tribes are rewritten so that the great-great-grandfather of this sheikh was married to the second cousin, great-great-great-great-great of this one. They rewrite the, the, the covenant because it's not, you know, it's not for tax purposes. You don't have to, you know, it's for unity purposes. So, what Moses is doing here, he's saying, from now on, you and God share the same blood. This covenant, this berit. That's why Jesus says, this is my, this, this is the new covenant in my blood. It will never be replaced. It is my blood and you share it and we are one, bound in this covenant. All that the Lord has said, we will do. Isn't that what he says throughout the 
discourses in John. You'll be my disciples if you do what I tell you, what I command you. That's covenant, you see? And so, uh, they make this covenant. Um, and, uh, see, he takes the blood and he sprinkles on the people and he says, Hene dam haberit. Asher karat Adonai imachem al kol hadevarim ha'aleh. Literally, you see, behold the blood uh, of the covenant which Adonai cut with you. That's the way they they say, make a covenant uh, with you on the basis of all these words. I forgot how they, according with all these words, yes. Now why on the Feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of the Lord, do they want us to read this text? Because you see, every day that we go to Mass, we seal a covenant with the Lord. We seal a covenant. All that the Lord has said we will do. And we seal it in His blood. And this is the new covenant. It's not like the old covenant. And this is the new covenant, Jeremiah says. I will put my spirit within them. I'll write my law on their hearts. No one will have to tell another, know the Lord, acknowledge the Lord, because they will all know me from the least to the greatest. They'll all acknowledge me. And their sins I will remember no more. And so, you see, this we're reading this background to the Last Supper. Uh, and it's quite beautiful, as you can see. Um, and so uh, then we have this psalm what return to the Lord can I make for all his mm, benefits he has given to me same word gemula which is here is in psalm the beautiful psalm of forgiveness my soul bless the Lord. Like everything that is in me, bless his holy name. And it goes on to talk about making a covenant, you see. And so, what return to the Lord for all his benefits to me? How do they translate that? All the great good done for me. Okay. Uh, I will take up the cup of salvation, you see, and I will call on the name of the Lord. Now, before we uh, went into the Latin and all the rest, because I said Mass in Latin for ten years, quid retribuam domino, for nobody was quid retribu with miki, what return shall I make to the Lord for all he has done for me? I will take up the chalice, and I'm holding the chalice in my hand. And I will call on the name of the Lord. You see, I will take up this chalice of salvation. Uh, and I will call on the name of the Lord. I will, re I will pay my, my, my uh, vows to the Lord. Now, I've, we've talked a lot about this word shalom, right? And I've said, you know, I can say, you know, uh, shalem, you know, I'm paying back my debt. That's the word here. Nidre Radonai Eshlem. I'm paying back my vows uh, uh, in the presence of all his people. See? And then it goes on. Dear, in the eyes of Adonai, you see, is the death of his devoted, that is, of his Hasidim. Hear that famous word again. What death is most dearest to the Father? The act of love in which Jesus died. And he is fixed in that act of love for eternity. So every time we receive the Eucharist, you see, we receive this Lord Christ fixed in the fire of that love with which he gave his life to the Father and brought us back to the Father. And that's what saves us, that love. 
It transpired, it was brought about in great suffering. But the suffering without the love would have meant nothing. It's that love. And so, you see, we're said here, I will pay my vows. You got any vows to the Lord? Of course you do. Somebody else made them for you if you were baptized for as a child. But do you renounce Satan and all his pomps and works? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? And if you're not saying it because you're just that big, somebody else saying it for you. But every Easter, you repeat this. Those are your vows to the Lord. You're going to repay these vows. You're going to live by this faith. All right. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of his uh, Hasidim. And you all know what that word means by now, I'm sure. Huh? His, has, his la Hasidai. Uh, and then, precious, it says, you see, in the eyes of Adonai is the death of these um, Hasidim. And then it goes on to say, Lord, I am your servant. Who said that? Jesus. I am the servant of the Lord. Avid. Servant. Now what makes a servant? Two things. Intimacy and obedience. So the servant is Jesus. The very living, eternal Son of the Father and obedient unto death. So he is the Eved Adonai, huh? the servant of God, okay? Uh, I am your servant, the child of your maid servant. Isn't that beautiful? Now it means here, I was born in your house, you know, and your maid servant, you know, one of your servants gave birth to me. So I belong in your house from birth. I'm part of your household from birth. I wasn't bought. I wasn't traded. I'm born here. Now the maid servant, who's that? That's Our Lady. And it's also the church. I'm born, you see, of your maid servant. You have loosed my bonds. This is all the power of the sacrifice of Christ. Now being given to us. Because when we receive the Lord Christ, we receive him fixed in that fire of the act of love in which he died. Or as St. Ephraim de Center, you receive, you receive the fire and the spirit. Oh boy. That's why the foremast has to be anointed by the spirit. So that the latter part of the mass, where the, where we give the, the same reverence to the Word in the first and to the Eucharist in the second part of the Mass, the Church says. And so, I will offer a sacrifice of praise and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His people. What are those vows to the Lord? Your baptismal promises. I renounce Satan and all his pomps and works, and I give myself entirely to Jesus Christ. I'm going to pay those vows, huh? In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, that's the church, Alleluia. This is an interesting way to celebrate the, the solemnity of the body and blood of the Lord, isn't it? What shall I render to the Lord for all he has given to me? He's given me his whole body and blood, soul and divinity. That's, you know, poured out on the cross for me. That's what, now what am I going to make in return? I have to make my whole self. What else can I do? That's what he did for me. Live the life that he's called me to. Be a good married man and a husband and a father. You know, be a good priest. Be a good wife and mother. Be a good woman, single for the Lord. Be a whatever. But I have to give my whole life back to him. And that's the joy. All right. <clears throat> 